Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to update Proxmox 8 to Proxmox 9. Proxmox 9 is currently in beta and should not be updated to for any production system. But since we're here in a home lab and we want to learn about Proxmox 9 before we start seeing it or utilizing it when the full release comes out, let's take a look at how to do so. So what I've done here inside of Proxmox is I've set up a VM of Proxmox Proxmox 8, and this is the same Proxmox that we used for our LVM extension video. And I've cloned it over and fired it up and opened the web interface. So what we have here is a fully installed version of Proxmox 8.4.1, which isn't quite the newest release. So the first thing we're going to want to do here to update to Proxmox 9 is go ahead, select our Proxmox server and select shell. I'm going to go ahead, make this shell a little bit bigger, bring it down here. And Proxmox has provided us with a script that we can go ahead and run to identify if we're going to have any problems with the update from Proxmox 8 to Proxmox 9. So in order to do that, we're going to have to utilize the command line, which is why I open the shell. And we're going to enter the command pve8 to pve9 dash dash full. Now, because this isn't updated to the newest version, I'm not entirely sure this is going to work. So let's go ahead and try running. And it says command not found. So we are going to have to update to Proxmox 8.4.5. To do that, we're going to go ahead, exit back out of the shell, head to PVE, go to updates, and press refresh. Now that we've refreshed, we get a whole entire list of things that need to update to bring us up to 8.4. 4.5. So we can go ahead and click upgrade, press Y, enter to run this. When your system updates are finished, you'll get a screen saying your system is up to date, like you're seeing here. And you can go ahead and close this console window, refresh your Proxmox web interface. You should see no updates, just as we see here. And you should have seen your version change to 8.4.5 at the time of filming this video. Now, now we can go back, open our shell, and we can take and try to run that script again. So this time pressing the up arrow and enter, the script executes. And it says that there was a total of 35 checks run, 28 passed, and six were skipped. So everything's good, there's no warnings, there's no failures, so we're good to proceed with the rest of the update process. Now to do this update, we're going to have to enter some new repositories into our Proxmox system. And the first repositories that we're going to have to add into the sources.list file are that for Trixie, which is the Debian 13 repositories. We're going to do that with this command here of sed-i, and then we're going to put s slash bookworm slash Trixie dash d in single quotes, and we're going to then then specify the file. I'll go ahead and put these commands that we're executing in the comment section or the description of the video rather below, assuming that YouTube allows me to do so. And then we're also going to execute this line, which is pretty similar to the previous line, but it adds a slash PVE enterprise list to everything. And you may not need this because we're not running enterprise versions, but but since the documentation has us entering this, we're going to go ahead and do so. So we'll press enter. Then we're going to use cat to create a file that has the repositories and the keys that we're going to need to run to get Proxmox 8. So the files that we just modified are going to modify the repositories for Trixie. Now we need to create a file which is going to have everything we need in it to go ahead and download the Proxmox software on top of Trixie. So this command is going to look like so. And once again, we're going to press enter. Now we're going to want to run an APT date. This is going to download everything from the new repositories of Trixie. And you can see we're skipping over some of our older repositories 
repository lists that were previously in the system. Now, the next step is going to be to run a APT upgrade, but this is going to be a special APT upgrade, and it's going to be an APT dist dash upgrade. And what this is going to do is, since we have the, the repositories linked to for the newest distribution, dist is actually going to give Debian the permission or give Proxmox the permission to go ahead and do the full update that it needs to to go to the newer version. Now this is going to run for a good length of time and we'll be back with you when we need to enter any information or okay any information and then we'll be back with you after it finishes. All right so here's the first screen that we have to interact with for Proxmox and what it's doing is it's asking for us to update our keyboard information here and since we are selected US English I don't need to do anything more than press enter. Now it's going to ask us to update or if it can change anything in the EPC issues file and the default is no and I don't see any reason to run anything but the default so we'll again press enter. So now it's asking when we want to go ahead and restart any services that are updated and whether the services during the package upgrade without asking and we're going to go ahead and say no we don't want to restart these services during the upgrade without asking because what can happen if you do restart these services during the upgrade is they can cause the upgrade to fail or things like the internet to drop out which will cause the internet to fail which will cause the upgrade to fail so we'll go ahead select no press enter so this is the first time Proxmox is asking us if it can restart a service the services that it would like to restart is postfix SSH and cron and I'm fine with that they shouldn't cause any failures of Proxmox or the internet or networking so we'll go ahead press tab for OK and press enter all right so the next thing it's asking me if it can modify is the LVM config file and again the default is no and I definitely don't want to modify the configuration of my LVM files you know, we, we could have things like extra hard drives added or whatnot, and modifying this file would cause that to fail, which would cause us to lose anything we had stored on that extra drive that failed off. So we definitely don't want to do this. So let's go ahead, follow the default option and press enter. All right. So now we've returned back to our root at PVE command line that we started with. So we we know our upgrade has finished. It does look like we have a warning about not having an EFI file. And I do remember reading something about Proxmox 9 still supporting Grub Boot, but that's going to be phased out. So if you have your Proxmox system installed on Grub, you are going to eventually be pushed over to UEFI. So we'll have to remember this, but since this is a virtualized Proxmox system more for research and learning we're not going to have to worry about that you may not be different if you are looking to run this on bare metal for learning I hope that it's not a concern for you if you are installing the beta but maybe it is so let's go ahead and close this window and return to the web interface go ahead refresh our web browser and you can see our version is not 9.011 beta. If we look at our repositories, you can see that we have added those Trixie repositories and replaced them out for Bookworm. We also now have a Proxmox source of PVE tests, and it looks like the PVE Enterprise is enabled. I'm going to highlight that and disable that just to 
to hopefully prevent any error messages in the future. Now, there shouldn't be anything since we just did this, but let's return up to update, press refresh, say okay to the no subscription, and run this, and it looks like it did complete successfully. There were a couple of skips, but that's understandable. Closing the window, and there are no updates. Now, since this video was really about how to get Proxmox 9 beta so you could start learning about it and not really a tour of Proxmox, I'm going to conclude this video here. My initial look without poking around is not much has changed for the look and feel of the web interface, which is exciting to me. I don't like when companies change their overall user experience of their interfaces with software updates. It definitely makes things a lot harder to learn. So if you'd like to learn more about Proxmox 9 in upcoming videos or about virtualization in general, consider liking and subscribing to Virtualize Everything. Also, if you'd please share this video to help virtualize everything continue to grow. That would be greatly appreciated. As always, have a good night.